Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Today is an exceptionally exciting day because yes, that is the all new Ferrari Roma. I had my chance to see this car in the flesh for the first time just a couple of months ago at the Dick Lovett Ferrari dealership in Swindon. But today, I'm going to be driving the Roma. If you're wondering why is that so exciting, well, you must be new to the channel. So welcome, my name is Sam, and I'm a Ferrari obsessive. So driving any new Ferrari is always exciting. But of all the cars that Ferrari currently produce, I feel like the Roma is, is the most bit of me. Like I've always loved GT cars and really ever since I sold my F-Type about three years ago now, I've longed for another front engine, rear wheel drive cruiser. In fact, last year I fell in love with the Bentley Continental GT and this is kind of Ferrari's take on a Bentley Continental GT. And you might be going, oh, come on, Sam, what about the 812 Superfast? That's essentially a rear-wheel drive front-engined cruiser, but no, it's not. I mean, even Ferrari themselves admit that that is a sports, or let's face it, supercar, whilst this is supposed to be a through-and-through -through GT car. And today, I'm gonna to be finding out if that is true, because I've got the keys for this thing for pretty much the whole day, and I'm gonna give it the ultimate GT, but also seen-through glass test by taking it to get a coffee, because we are here in Italy for the first time in what feels like forever, and despite the fact it's a little bit cloudy. I'm excited to be back because it's been so long since I've been in Italy and been so long since I've had a proper Italian espresso. So yes, let's jump in the Roma and see if it's going to live up to my own personal hype and expectations. for an overview of the sort of exterior and interior details of this car, I'm actually gonna put a link to my previous video from a couple of months ago below so you can go and check that out because I kind of went over the car in detail and I don't wanna repeat myself. But the important thing to know is that whilst this car is based on the Portofino platform, it's basically 70% new. It's supposed to be a little stiffer, a little racier, but also more usable. And we're gonna come back to this later in the video because whilst, as I say, I really like the idea of this car, I think it is a tiny bit confused because last night in the briefing, Ferrari told me that this is really hoping to bring a whole load of new customers to the brand. The Roma is supposed to attract sort of people who maybe wouldn't have considered Ferrari before because they don't want a shouty, show-offy supercar. They want something sort of subdued and, and subtle to, to do long distances at potentially high speeds in. So essentially, Bentley Continental GT customers is what I'm freaking out. But, but the way Ferrari describe it is the 50s and 60s gentleman driver. And actually, you know what? I like describing myself as a 50s and 60s gentleman driver. It feels kind of fitting. It's cool, it's elegant, it's stylish. Things that I'm not, but I hope to be. Uh, so yes, anyway, right now, just cruising through this beautiful region, which I think is the Lange region. Definitely not saying that right. It's kind of a, a vineyard, a wine region uh, of the northwest of Italy with beautiful sort of castellos and villas and what, I mean, insane views. And so like this in, well, I'm in comfort mode in auto, cruising along, the car is already very impressive because Italian roads aren't that smooth. In fact, these roads seem to be very bumpy and this car seems to be handling those bumps pretty damn well, which it needs to do because if you are gonna attract customers who want to be able to cruise and not always be flat out in their pistas, they need to be able to enjoy the suppleness of a softer suspension in this mode. But, but we're gonna have to find out what happens when we start to dial this thing up. But for now, I'm already loving this thing. Oh God. One thing which has definitely been kind of vindicated today is my thoughts that that car is outrageously good looking. I said it when I went to see the car in Swindon a few months ago that I was kind of on and off about the looks of the Roma since it launched. At one moment, I kind of loved the idea of it. Then I thought, oh no, it looks a bit weird, a bit like a new Jaguar F-Type. But seeing it in the flesh and then seeing it out here today in its kind of natural habitat, I'm like, 
oh my god, it's just amazing. Except one element, because now this is very sort of Ferrari geekery. This car has a rear spoiler, actually a sort of hidden active rear spoiler. You can't probably see it right now, but that small black panel at the bottom of the rear window is an active rear spoiler. And you might be like, cool, like that's actually quite an ingenious way of incorporating it. And so many cars around the world have active rear spoilers, but no, Ferraris don't, historically. Really, if you think really hard about Ferraris that have had rear wings, whether they're active or fixed, the only two that come to my mind quickly are the F40 and the F50. Let's forget challenge race cars, I'm talking about road cars. Throughout the years, for I've always managed to make beautiful, clean-lined GT and mid-engine sports cars without the need for a rear wing, whether it's active, whether it's hidden, whether it's fixed, whatever. And that was kind of a hang-up from Enzo Ferrari and also Luca de Montezemolo, who felt like wings kind of overcomplicated the look of a car. Now, for some reason, and I know why, aerodynamically, mechanically, Ferrari decided that the Roma did need a wing and they were going to use one. Now, I think, as a complete Ferrari geek, that's quite a huge concession. And I actually asked them about it last night during our sort of big press briefing. I was like, why now have you finally chosen to kind of implement a rear spoiler? And I'll be honest, no one could really answer me. And I think, really, it's just a reflection upon a new era at Ferrari. This car is different to pretty much every other Ferrari in the range. And as I keep saying, it's, it's been implemented to try and attract new customers to the brand. Ferrari are trying to change. And whilst you might not think a rear spoiler is a big deal, for someone like me, it's a huge sign as to a different era of Ferrari. And I actually really don't like it. I just, I, I don't like the way it, I don't like the way it looks when it's moving, but thank God Ferrari clever enough to basically hide it at any time you step out of the car because it only pops up at around 100 kilometers an hour and you can't choose to pop it up. It's done automatically for the performance of the car. So, you know, they were clever in that sense because look how beautiful it is down there. It's just amazing. But the minute you see that rear wing, it's like bleh, bleh. for this moment, well, all my life, but more realistically, since lockdown. Ah, there is something so intense about Italian espresso. I mean, this will probably have me going for about four days, or more realistically, on my caffeine intake level is about 30 minutes, but oh, I have missed this delightfulness. Anyway, what an amazing morning it has been. Uh, really, just been, just been kind of cruising in the Roma, and if you think so far I've been a bit subdued, a bit laid back, maybe not that excited by my experience, you are wrong. I've been just trying to convince myself that I'm not already madly in love with the car and I don't desperately need it and want it in my life. So I'm like, oh yeah, you know, it's, it's good, it's fine. But uh, inside I'm going, oh my God. Um, the thing that's blown me away, the quality of the ride. Honestly, the amount of times I've approached bumps and cracks in the road and thought, you know, that I'm driving my 911 Carrera T and I need to grimace and brace and my back's about to be broken and then actually, no, not at all. We just seem to softly ride over them and that is groundbreaking, I think. Uh, but essentially, to sort of push myself really over the edge and, and admit that I am truly and madly and deeply in love with this car, I need to now sort of exploit it to its full potential by turning it up to race mode, something I haven't done yet. Because whilst this car is proven to be insanely capable, it's also supposed to be a Ferrari. And to be a Ferrari, it still needs to handle a twisty road insanely well. Can you tell that coffee's kicking in? I can. I feel like I'm, wow, this is... Anyway, let's head back outside and go and find ourselves a twisty road and see, yes, if this Roma is something I need in my life.
So here we are then in race mode. The first time a Ferrari GT car has had race mode. There was no race mode on the California, California T, Portofino or Lusso. So this is a, a big thing for Ferrari and it, it kind of ties into what I was saying earlier about this car being a little bit conflicted because as I mentioned throughout the day this is a fantastic everyday usable GT car and Ferrari made a big deal about it last night in the briefing this car is to attract people who you know just want to cruise only want to use the speed every now and again want a car that they can just live with on a daily basis in a kind of subtle way however it's got race mode, unlike any other GT car. So what's that about? That's essentially suggesting that it should be more capable than most of their other GT car products. And it's got more power, as I mentioned, tuned up to around 612 horsepower. This thing is supposed to be a bit of a weapon. So, so what is it, a casual cruiser or a thoroughbred Ferrari? Well, it seems to be both because, oh my God, is it good? Now we are in the almighty race mode. Now I have to say that these roads in this area are insanely slippery. I don't know what they use to make the tarmac around here, but I think it might be ice. So I'm not that confident mashing the throttle, but I am confident in this car because, oh, I mean, surely you can hear it now. To drive this thing faster is sublime. I mean, it is 100% a Ferrari and boy is it a good Ferrari. It's so controllable, it's so smooth. That's been the big thing about this car all day. It's unbelievably smooth, not frantic. I've actually had Vicky, my girlfriend, with me today and she's had plenty of experience in Ferraris and kind of most recently in terms of modern Ferraris, the Pista. She didn't really like it too much. It was too edgy for her, too kind of like direct and pointy. This, she said multiple times, has reminded her of the F-Type, a car we absolutely loved together. And you know, that really is doing this car a disservice because it is night and day from a Jaguar F-Type, but it's got that kind of, you know, enjoyable speed and power thing about it. Okay, it's outrageously fast, but it all feels controllable. It doesn't feel like the car's gonna do anything that you don't want it to do. You can drive it in such a smooth and enjoyable way. It's not like, oh, ah, oops, ah. It's just like, oh. I'm going to get to where I want to go exceptionally fast, very comfortably, very well, look elegant whilst I'm doing it, and then get out and be happy about life, not have to go and see a chiropractor as you might have to do in some other cars. I mean, look at this. This is absolutely spentabulous. This section here. It's quick, boys and girls. It is bloody quick, but this eight-speed gearbox, it's an all-new eight-speed gearbox for this car. It's gonna go in the SF90 as well. It is butter smooth. I mean, you could say too smooth, but I think it fits the car perfectly. The characteristics of the car, that is it. I have misunderstood this car since it launched. I was like, okay, it's a, a hard top Portofino. No, wait, it's a more racy Portofino. No, hold on a sec, it's a daily ball, usable, quite boring Ferrari. It's not, it is the ultimate everyday Ferrari GT. It is a Ferrari Bentley Continental GT. And that's why I think I'm absolutely falling in love with it because it's just, for me, the perfect recipe. You still have air Ferrari, you still have excitement, passion. When you walk away from it, you just, everything tingles and, oh, I've stumbled across a Porsche meat. Not even joking, I have actually stumbled across a Porsche meat. I'm, I'm sorry, Ferrari PR. I'm gonna have to fanboy ever so slightly here because it looks like we've got a load of 964s, I think. That is super, super nice. I just adore this thing. And you know what it makes me want to do? It makes me want to go and put thousands, if not tens or hundreds of thousands of miles on the clock because I feel like there's nothing this thing couldn't take on. Despite the fact it's rear wheel drive, it feels so usable and so grippy. This road, as I keep mentioning, is so slippery. But I have confidence, or some confidence, and oh, there's a truck falling in the hedge here? I genuinely think it looks like a truck has fallen in the hedge. Ooh. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, bad day for him. I tell you, these roads, they are not ideal. Back where the day began then, and how do I summarise my feelings about this car? I so wanted 
to not like it because I knew if I did like it at some point in my future it was going to cause me a lot of financial pain but unfortunately I have fallen in love with it. I was a bit nervous actually about coming to this press launch because having read and watched some of the previous reviews from earlier on in the kind of press launch activity I thought you know what I might be a bit disappointed with this thing but it's the complete opposite. It's kind of blown me away. In fact I think it's the the sort of the newest Ferrari or, or the first new Ferrari that's got me this excited for a long time because don't get me wrong I love 812 super fast I love F8 Tributo and all these different cars but they haven't necessarily excited me in the way that so many old Ferraris do until this came along it's a sort of more accessible usable 812 super fast and a more honed in Portofino but I think as I've kind of mentioned before once you understand what it is and how you should use it it's just mega and I wish I was like JWW or Shmi 150 and I could stand here going guys I've ordered one my Roma is coming soon but I'm just not that rich it's that plain and simple I think in the UK this car starts at like 175 grand and then to make it look like this you can only be getting close to 200 grand and yeah I just I just don't have that money but I've decided to give myself a new goal because we all need goals in lives and it is now my goal to at some point own aroma who knows when that might be I do think that potentially they might drop in value the minute they drive off the forecourt so maybe in a few few years time I'll be able to scoop one of these up at a bit more of an affordable price and look don't get me wrong it's got some quirks to coin a Doug DeMuro phase the the boot isn't exactly huge for a GT car the interior is pretty much all touch screen which is okay I guess cool until it gets dirty or stops working at which point nothing will work but fundamentally, as a car, as a thing that you can go out and perform in, this is pretty amazing. Anyway, there's a screaming kid over there who clearly doesn't like the Roma very much, so I'm going to wrap things up. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have, and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.